Welcome to Science Olympiad at Home. Hi, my name is Sherry Haug and I'm the Elementary Director for Science Olympiad. Today we're going to do an event called Save the Ice. The event today has participants constructing a container using a variety of materials that will prevent an ice cube from melting. And as always, you can find that event on our website at soinc.org. So we went hunting around our house to see what kind of materials we could find that would help an ice cube from melting inside of a container made from those materials. So, found a bunch of takeout containers because we've been having a lot of takeout during our quarantine. So I found some small containers and I have larger containers. Some of them actually are vented. <clears throat> I have different shapes. I have dark colors as well as white. But then I also have some hard plastic containers. I have some paper plates and paper bowls. I found some cardboard trays. I thought maybe a soda container might work, so I cut the top off of that. I found some fabric. I have some plain cotton, some quilted material, and some felt. And then I found a koozie for a soda and thought to myself, if it would keep a soda cold, it will certainly keep my ice cube cold? I'm not sure. Let me tell you what we did first. We poured some ice into a plastic cup and we measured how much ice there was and then put it in the freezer. The reason we did this is we want to make all of our ice cubes to a consistent size. So we measured the amount of water just by going to the lines of the cup. So if we use the same cup every time to prepare our ice cube, we don't actually have to measure with a measuring device, we just know where the water should go. So we filled this up, after it got hard, we cut it open and removed the ice cube and that's sitting in the freezer waiting for us to use in a little while. We're going to take that ice cube and we're gonna put it in a Ziploc bag. Now the directions call for a sandwich type bag and use a twist tie and not a Ziploc bag. The reason it calls for this is that they're fearful that you can't get the, the zipper completely tight and stop any water from escaping. I don't have any sandwich bags at home. This is all I have. So I'm confident that when I put the ice cube in here, I can make sure that this is completely closed. And the reason that that's important is we're going to build our device around this ice cube, attempting to keep it as cold as we possibly can for as long as we possibly can, and then we're going to measure how much has melted, and we're gonna actually do that with a measuring device so that we can be precise in our measurements. Let's get started building. So let's talk a little bit about the science behind Save the Ice. So think about if you're outside on a warm, sunny day, how quickly the ice will melt in your drink. We're gonna to try to create more of a refrigerator environment. So we're gonna to try to protect the ice or insulate the ice as much as we can from the air around it in order to keep the melting to a minimum. We don't want our drinks to be watered down. So I'm going to try to build a little bit <clears throat> without my ice because I don't want it to melt while I'm waiting. So I've decided that I'm just going to do a little bit of building without doing any exploration on the internet. What you might want to do is you might want to do some exploring and just go to the internet to find out what would be good insulators for ice. Don't Google, how do I make a really good insulating package to keep an ice cube cold? Because that's kind of cheating in the whole idea of the experimentation of all of this. You're gonna wanna work with different materials. You may need to build six or seven different prototypes to figure out what is the best material. So I've started with this cardboard. And I was planning on putting this cardboard in this plastic container, but I realized that's just not possible. It's not going to fit in there. So I have to change my way of doing that. Then I think I'm going to grab this cotton material. And after I put my ice in this bag, I'm going to wrap my cotton material around it and stuff it down inside of there. Then I have a couple more plastic containers. Maybe I'll use this one, and I'm going to see if I can make all of this fit inside of here. Give me a minute. In building my device to hold my ice cube, I've already created this cardboard holder. Now, in my head, it makes sense that if I leave this open and leave this open, 
air can get into there, cold air can escape, warm air can enter, and we're going to have the melting process occur. So I was going to use a large styrofoam container, but instead I think I'm going to use a small one. And I'm going to actually fit this around here, and I'm going to use, use duct tape. Seems to me that duct tape will let less air through than masking tape would. So I'm going to take a length of duct tape, and I'm going to tape it over here. And I'm going to take another one, and I'm going to take it over here. And then I'm going to actually take a piece of duct tape and wrap it all the way around so that no air gets in there at all. Now, this isn't very pretty. It doesn't have to be pretty. Okay, let's go get the ice. So here's my ice. So I just wanted to show you that we have a couple more ice cubes ready if you have many com competitors. But here's my ice cube. I'm going to take it, put it into my Ziploc bag, make sure it's good and tight, get inside. I'm going to take some of my cotton material, and actually I'm going to wrap it, instead of just sticking it in there, I'm going to wrap this around because it seems the more that I can protect my ice cube from the air, the less it will melt. I'm going to stick that down in there. And then I'm going to do the same thing that I did with the bottom. And I'm going to attach this clamshell container with duct tape. Because again, I need to protect it as much as possible from the air. Okay, we've decided that we're going to let our device sit for 30 minutes. And we're going to see how much melt we have in 30 minutes. I'm going to start my timer now. has gone by. Let's see what it looks like. Wow, that's pretty impressive. So we had seven milliliters or half of a tablespoon of melt from 30 minutes of being inside of our insulated package. I'd say that's pretty good. Now, maybe you wanna go longer. Maybe our ice cube was so big that maybe if we would've gone more than that, we could have seen a bigger drastic difference. Or maybe I just built such a great insulator that it was gonna be slow melting the whole time. Again, these are numbers that you get to decide, you get to play with. Okay, ladies, you've got the exact same size ice cube. You've got five minutes to build a device that will keep your ice cube coldest. If you think there's something else that you want, ask me. Can I have a freezer? No. Ready, set, go. Mover <laughs> two. <laughs> Let's take them outside.
Okay. Okay, ladies. So it's been 30 minutes. They've been sitting out in the sun. You're going to open up your device and you're going to use the measuring spoons in order to see how much meltage you have. Ready? Go. <laughs> Uh, let me get a close up. It's my eyes. Nice. Just got a little melted there. <laughs> An ice cube. Oh! Wow. It's not bad. Maria, I had a little under one teaspoon. I had a little over one teaspoon. I had over one tablespoon. So again, the idea is to use different materials, and try to make that container maybe as small as you want to have it and, or as big as you could make it. But any way you do it, make sure you have fun. Thanks so much. Woo! Riley! I, I did it in the beginning part. This has been Science Olympiad at Home. Be sure to check out our website at www.soinc.org slash elementary. See you next time.